Well, we got a question. Was Colton in heaven? Casting for this unique film was very, very important as well because there is an earthiness about the Burpos, if you will. And so we needed people who could convey the drama of the story in simplistic terms. In casting for Todd Burpo, there was one person who came to mind, and that was Greg Kinnear. I'm not sure that I'm trying to do as much of a character study about uh, this person. To me, the more interesting character study is the whole story we're telling that involves this community. I wanted someone who could play both the masculinity of Todd Burpo, but who could also play the charisma, who could speak with such power. 10,000 times I've been here and I've talked about on earth as it is in heaven. And who could be a caring and loving father. It's always an odd thing that you're going to have a level of intimacy. We've maneuvered our way through it. Uh, I feel like a team, in a way, and I feel like that's what Sonia and Todd are, a team. You had a rough day, didn't you? As long as I'm with you, I'm not afraid. Kelly Riley was a, a different kind of choice. I had never met Kelly. I'd only seen her work a couple of times and had been deeply impressed by it. But I was even more impressed when I got to meet her in person. She had such an earthiness as well as a delicacy. I feel like she doesn't need to have all the answers. She's just open to other possibilities and what her four-year-old son experienced and allowing it to be a mystery. It's all right, it won't ever hurt you. To find someone to play Colton was a huge challenge. Every one of us was worried about it because the movie would not succeed if the child seemed artificial. Part of what made the story compelling was a four-year-old boy is saying with absolute innocence, this is what I saw. We were about to do a casting with Greg coming in to read with the boys who were gonna film it. And we had one extra slot that we had not filled. And we had not included Connor because he was too young and he had not yet turned six. But we watched his audition tape and just thought, we've got to try this boy. And as soon as he came in and started to read, we knew this has to be our cult. Young Connor, he was five when we started on this picture, but he's, he's aged into the ripe old age of six now. Connor is talented, I think, without any self-awareness to his own ability. Greg was always wonderful about positioning and working with him and the magic would happen. You saw my grandfather? You saw him. Where did you see him? In heaven. You don't know what acting is until you're face to face with a kid like this and you're acting your heart out and he goes <laughs> and yawns so hard that your hair gets sucked into his mouth. I mean, he's, he, you just don't know what to expect moment to moment. Obviously it's his first acting experience, but I think at that age it's not acting. We can learn a lot from him. He's very present, he's very in the moment. Will you call some friends and ask them to pray for him? Of course I will, honey. Right now. I'll pray for you too. The casting of the people around the Burpos was crucial as well. I didn't want to try to portray individual, specific people in the lives of the Burpos. I had tried to synthesize characters, somebody that would be a concentrated emotion and figure in their lives. So the characters of Nancy and Jay were characters that I put together from the various pieces. If Todd isn't back soon, I'm going to kill somebody. And I'm gonna start with you. My take on Nancy is that she's a upstanding church leader, and she's a woman who has lost a child, so I think she's going through a lot of uh, pain and bitterness, trying to find her way back to being open to love again. I need some advice, smart advice. <clears throat> well, I am not smart, so you came to the right I guy. I know that. Nothing but clumsy, inaccurate advice available here. Thomas Hayden Church is from the South. He has a rootedness in what is natural, and he has a gift for playing someone that you can completely believe is both a volunteer fireman and a banker and Todd Burpo's best friend. 
That's what I'm saying. I don't know what to preach. I don't have anything to say. Just speak from the heart, Todd, like you always do. In a community like this, which is not that far flung from the community I live in in Texas, if there is a crisis with one family, people close around in a very loving, supportive way. And that's what I really liked about the story. The best films are able to capture, you know, what uh, we go through as individuals and then also as a collective. And I feel like this movie, just like the book, it will capture the imagination and the heart and ultimately you'll be inspired. Storytelling for me is as natural as breathing. It tells us who we are. We share our values through stories. And stories like this require courage to tell. Is heaven for real? Every single one of you has asked that question. All of us have. My hope is that at the end of the day that this is a story that's accessible regardless of where your feelings are in terms of the afterlife or heaven. Do you take it as a literal event? Well, for him, it's not imaginary. It's not a metaphor or a feeling. It happened. I think that this film will be the catalyst of great conversation, not only amongst those who are great believers, but particularly amongst those who are skeptical of all things. I saw angels, and they were saving to me. Colton gives us the permission to believe without so many humanistic things that get in the way of the magic of life and the power of a spiritual experience. One of the great things about any story is that it has mystery and it has suspense in it. And it is the suspense that draws us and it's the questioning that keeps us moving forward in life. And the story provides some answers. But every person who watches this movie will come away with questions as well as with answers, I hope.